And there's obviously bad things that I probably won't forget. You name it, <laughs> I've done it. We spent last summer interviewing people on the street about the most important moments of their lives. Oh my, that's a big one. Um, Here are the top five things that we learned. <clears throat> Since it's beyond tape, I better be careful. Lesson number one, work hard for things beyond just money. What are you working so hard for? To get into get into a treatment center, into detox and into a treatment center to uh, break this system of uh, drug use that I've created for myself. We asked strangers what they were working so hard for, and no one said to just be rich. Instead, the answers were deeper. To have purpose, to get healthy, to connect with loved ones. Take a look. Honestly, just to kind of make make the best of the day to day to be honest. I have all these sorts of goals, but I just wanna I just wanna be able to, to live the best life that I can live, right? And that, that for me is a is a creative life. If I can I can sustain myself and, and live a creative life and that's that's good for me. <laughs> you know, having a sense of purpose, having a sense of purpose, belonging, uh, and also like I love I'm passionate about uh, fashion and modeling, acting. Actually, I got my certificate as a certified makeup artist. And uh, yeah, I love doing acting. I like to do like TikToks, make, you know, abstract. Uh, yeah, you know, like I just, I'm determined to be something than, you know, all the people that told me I'm not supposed to be. Try to become a better person. As I get older, I, I realize I've made a lot of mistakes in my life and uh, not much. Yeah, I'm into my, uh, my second, well, my half, first half century. And uh, I just try, like I say, try to make up for maybe past mistakes I've done in life too, and try to become a better person going forward. But I mean, it's it's rewarding in that, oh, I mean, I have family. I mean, I don't have any children of my own, but I do have a lot of family and uh, niece and nephews. And if that is, I, if I were to say anything really that motivates me, it's really them. If I were to give up on, on myself, I basically, you know, Getting up on them. Lesson number two. Make more time for the moments you spend with the people you love. See my dad after three years before the pandemic, so that was great. We asked people what moment they will never forget, and we learned that we're going to remember the important moments we've spent with those around us much more than those extra hours we spent at the office. Well, because our daughter's here, we're visiting from Regina. She lives here in Edmonton now. It was when uh, we went to nationals in London, Ontario, and she won the women's uh, national tournament with the U of M Bisons. And it was just an amazing moment. It was, yeah, I'll never forget it. Yeah. It was hockey. Yes, oh, I mentioned it was hockey. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was an awesome moment, yeah. Oh, so um, my cousin, um, he was in the car with my grandpa and my uncle, and um, my cousin said, can you roll the window down? And then the uncle said, say, can you roll the window down and say please? Then he said, can you roll the window down and say please? I will never forget that. Walking down the aisle with my eldest daughter on Saturday was facing all the people. Everybody was watching her and she said to me, she's, Dad, why are they? I don't understand. I, I'm uncomfortable with them all looking at me. I said, don't worry about it. Just, uh, they're not really looking at you, they're looking at me. <laughs> there was this one time, I think I was about, uh, I was, must have been 10 or 11 years of age. And um, we were at, on Hornby Island, which is um, an island just out off the BC coast. And we were flying kites and we had um, three kites. We had a goldfish kite and then like a bluefish kind of kite and then another kite that my brother was operating. And um, basically what had happened, a storm was coming in. And um, because the storm was coming in, the wind got all crazy and the kites were doing this all through the air. And it was so funny. We had the goldfish kite end up going into the water, coming out and um, it picks up some seaweed, but it's still in the air with the seaweed now and we're just laughing so hard and my little brother who was six at the time he poops his pants as we're laughing and so he's like waddling home like this with poop in his pants after just watching these kites dips and like dip and turn and it was just i'll never forget that moment 
It's so funny. <laughs> Just one of the best moments ever. Yeah. Lesson number three. Lying isn't going to get you ahead. The biggest lie I've ever told. I, I hurt the first love of my life. I told him I wasn't seeing anybody, but I really was. And that was one of the lies that really I regret to this day, because it was a five-year relationship and I ruined it. So that's one of the lies that I really regret. Yeah. When we asked people what the biggest lie they ever told was, most said that they regretted it, especially when it has hurt the people they loved. This lie I ever told, and I still regret. And I don't know if I told my mom the truth uh, before she passed away. Well, well when, when I was a little child, uh, she was going to SS King University. And I was just a youngster, I was about maybe seven, eight, and I stole all her uh, bus, weeks, bus change from her purse. And she was up getting ready for school, and then she was uh, losing her change. And Tommy, where's my change, Johnny? Oh, I need my change. I said, I don't have it, I don't know. And, and here it's dangling my socks, and, and uh, and she just, she was so mad she had to walk all the way to school all week and I still feel real bad for that. I think I said I'm sorry to her. Well, <clears throat> since it's being on tape, I better be careful. Well, honestly, the only thing I can really remember is the biggest thing was I was coming back uh, to do an exam at fleet school and I said the ferry was late. And actually, when they actually investigated it, the ferry wasn't late, I was. So, Did you get in trouble with it? Yes. What I was, happened? I was to find the ship for seven days and I lost a thousand dollars. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it wasn't worth it? Not really. Uh, because it goes on your record. Yeah. But uh, I thought I could get away with it safe because you know, when the ferry is late, you have to wait. There's no other way to get across unless you have, you know, you can get a Sea King helicopter come get you, which I doubt you can actually do unless you're an officer. And I was an NCO, which is a non-commissioned officer. So yeah, that, I was the biggest lie and I probably shouldn't have done it. But after I did it, it was already done because I signed a form like that, stating that that's what happened. And then when they investigated it, that's not what happened. Lesson number four, reflect on your life. You know, that was about 25 years ago, I hit rock bottom with drinking and, and I cried out to God and he showed up in my life when I try and run my life my way I screw up every time so I read my Bible and pray and Jesus is a real God and and he leads and guides me make sure that you are constantly learning not just from the good but the bad too listen to what these people had to say about what moment from their life has taught them the most I think there's three major moments in my life that will teach me the most is losing a mother losing your father and losing yourself. Because I cared a lot about my mom and she's not here anymore. She was a wonderful person. She she lived she she lived she lived freely. She worked hard. She took care of us kids and she was an excellent mom. I'm thirty-three now. And uh, six kids in <laughs> and I think one there isn't one that taught me the most of it. I don't think, because I think I learn something new every day. And everything happens for a reason, right? And, uh, but I learned something really cool yesterday from my worker who's gonna advocate for my son, myself, and baby daddy. And uh, basically what she said to me was just live in the now, which was the coolest thing I've ever heard. She said not the past, because you can't change what you've done. Don't look forward, because you look forward and you're 10 steps back already, because you can tell yourself that she was telling you you can't focus on something you can't change. You can't focus on something that's going to happen because you don't know. My ex-wife got accepted in uh, Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College after two years of uh, uh, writing exam for medical school, MCAT medical college admission test, which uh, she didn't get in. But the third time she did, she got accepted in Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College. In that moment, I was so happy when she gave me that news 
we had a kid too, right? And uh, his mother, my ex-wife, she got accepted. I was so happy and I was so hopeful that women, especially women, can do anything. Doesn't matter if they are married, they have kids, and they are this and that. You know? If they put their mind on something, they can do it. They can do it, that's no question about that. Uh, why I am saying that now to you is, I'm coming from a country that women is a, a second citizen. This is one of the reasons that I am in this country and I came from that environment to this environment. What's that? Because I, I always believed in the same right that I have, my sister has to have to. Lesson number five. You never know what people are going through. There's a lot of uh, ups and downs that a lot of people tend to not really see. If we weren't interviewing these people, they would have stayed strangers on the street to us. We wouldn't have known anything about their stories. By talking to the people around you, even by just having short conversations, you are able to learn about their lives and often learn that you aren't alone. And it's like she was just staring into my soul. There's some, some trauma moments as well. Sometimes it isn't just strangers you need to learn more about though. This is an interview we did with Janine, a woman who, by learning more about a friend, uncovered the truth about what was happening in her life. Um, in my situation, I didn't know about anything in my friend's life that, that there was violence happening in, in her life. Um, she had a, a husband or a boyfriend with two children, and my kids were about the same age. I went over to her house. We had just kind of reacquainted because we knew each other about 10 years before. Bumped into each other in the hallway at a school and um, she just asked me if I wanted to come over. And So I came over and I brought a pie because, you know, you got to have apple pie when you're <laughs> meeting a friend. And I um, was there probably for about 10 minutes or so. And we were just chatting and she had just moved into a townhouse. I had kind of arranged for that about, you know, a week or two before that. Um, but this was the first time we really got together, just the two of us. And her boyfriend showed up. As soon as he walked in, he was angry at her. He was swearing at her and uh, saying she was, in, I guess, in regular words, um, like, terrible, um, a, a slut, or um, lazy, or, you know, just, he was angry at her. And I couldn't figure out why he was just out of the gate so angry. She just kept saying to him, you, you need to go, you need to go. And he just escalated and I, and I kept saying to him, you know, she doesn't want you here. Like you're, you weren't invited, you need to leave. And she said to me, oh, just, you know, she tried to quiet me down because I, she probably thought maybe I would make the mood even more escalated. Uh, eventually she was walking towards the door and he was following her and he gave her a push and then she was underneath the, I guess it would be a screen door and she was stuck, like she was on the front porch. Um, there's a couple steps, I guess. And she was caught under it, you know, like so she couldn't, get away from her. And he was, and he's going over her and you blah, 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 right? And I, I said to him, I need like, let's, let's help her get up. Like she's stuck. And he grabbed my hand or my wrist and threw me back. I hit the, the closet door behind me. And, um, you know, it's pretty scary. <laughs> I've never been, physically handled before and uh, but you know my adrenaline's up and I want to save my friend and and I'm so anyways I could see past them and there's a man walking by and these are townhouses so just in between there's sidewalk and he was walking by and I 
happened to be my uncle, Uncle Lou, uh, through marriage. And um, I yelled out to him, I'm like, Uncle Lou, like, he's the manager of the property and just happened to be going by. And I don't know, maybe he had heard some noise or something. And he came over and I, I said, this guy won't leave. He wasn't invited, we need him to go. And so the boyfriend said to him, well, you can't make me do whatever. And he goes, yeah, I can, I'm the manager. And he took his arm, I guess, as, as I can recall, and walked him out of there. That was that altercation. And eventually we did, she took him to court and it was a custody case. And she asked me to be a witness as to, you know, what he had done. I didn't know much about it. I didn't know if I was going to be, if he was being charged with violence or what it was. And um, so I went on the stand and told them exactly what I said today. Well, in other words, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, they didn't, she didn't win. So he didn't, he didn't have any consequences other than this story out in the public, I guess, in court. And about three months later, she asked me if I would like to go to Boston Pizza for dinner. And I said, oh, sure, I'll do that. Just, you know, I'm not doing anything. Met her, and as I walked in, they were sitting together at a table. And I thought, whoa. <laughs> at the time, I'm thinking, how could you do this to me? You know, very selfish. You know, um, I couldn't believe it. I was, I'm like, why are you with this guy? He's, but I guess he's the father of her children. And um, I had to sit and I didn't say anything to him. I think eventually he went to the washroom and I said to her, I can't stay. This, I wish you wouldn't, I wish you at least told me this was happening. I think she wanted us to make up. Or I have no idea. And I just look back at that and, and think, wow, um, I don't know some of the things that go on in people's lives, you know. The best way we can learn is through the experiences and stories of others. Take these lessons forward and use them in your own life. So that was awesome, right? What else you got for me? Great answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for watching this video and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more. If you support our message, please share this video with someone who needs to see it.